Philip Buchanan. This is a story about a rock and roll memory. It starts in a retirement home, which, if you think about it, is a likely place to find people involved in the musical era that began in the 50s. Still, I was hardly thinking that when I went there to visit my father. He's 97 years old and not a fan of rock and roll. He's a big band guy. He had nothing whatsoever to do with rock and roll. Didn't listen to it, didn't understand it, didn't care for it. So, when I see people my father's age, I don't associate them with contemporary music. That included the man sitting next to him at a recent visit. The two seemed pretty chummy. They were laughing and joking around in a place where so many sit quietly and say very little. This is John, my father said by way of introduction. He used to own a bar in New Hope. John said, I still own it. During the 70s, I spent a fair amount of time at bars in New Hope, an artsy, touristy town on the Delaware River. I asked John which bar he owns. John and Peter's, he said. Of course. In its heyday, John and Peter's was one of the hippest musical establishments around. It rivaled anything in Greenwich Village and had acts every night of the week. It's a cramped little basement type place that seats maybe 150. I remember it having a very low ceiling and being slightly claustrophobic. John and Peter's was a great place to take a date, but it had to be the right date. An adventuresome music lover, someone a little rough around the edges. Parking was impossible in New Hope, and I told John how I wouldn't even look for a spot when I went to his club. Instead, I would just drive to the very end of the main street at the edge of town. I'd park there and walk to the club. Each step would quicken as I got nearer, anticipating a great scene. The acts were always top-notch, usually quality people coming up in the business. Sometimes they would make it bigger later, sometimes they wouldn't. I saw my first reggae band at John and Peter's. I saw a band fronted by Frank Stallone, brother of Sylvester Stallone. I saw a guy named Buzzy Linhart. Buzzy was a great showman. He did a sweet, sad tune he co-wrote called Friends. Bette Midler later turned that into an anthem for herself. Probably made Buzzy rich. Other acts were John Sebastian, who formed The Loving Spoonful, Maria Moldauer, Mary Chapin Carpenter, John Hammond, Eric Anderson, Clarence Gatemouth Brown, and so many others. But there was one very special band of local musicians that played there often. I saw them at least three times, maybe more. After telling John how much I liked his club, I mentioned this great band and said for the life of me, I couldn't remember its name. Now John and Peters has been around for 45 years and the bar's website says 48,000 musicians have graced the stage. But John knew exactly who I was talking about. Johnny's Dance Band, he said, smiling. Their name was Johnny's Dance Band. Wow, and the memories came rushing back. How did he know what I was thinking? Obviously, this band had meant a lot to him and his club. I could see the pride in his face. He said they reformed and are still performing. John and I agreed the reason Johnny's Dance Band didn't break out was because their stage theatrics, they called it Rock and Roll Vaudeville, didn't translate to records. There's actually some existing footage of the band at John and Peter's doing one of their signature pieces called Alfredo. singer Nanette Mancini performed it with an affected accent. Peter said the club is being run now by two women and that he gets back there sometimes. Apparently the spirit of his youth hasn't left him. Sitting down and leaning slightly on his walker, they really build them nice these days like bikes, 
John said the club may be throwing a party for him and a member of Johnny's dance band is expected to show up. Maybe I'll go. I hope that open parking spot at the other Main Street is still there. Thanks for watching. I'm Notebook M.